Hey everyone, today we're going to be doing a really simple watercolor tutorial. We're going to be painting an orange slice. It's one of the easier watercolor projects I've come across and you don't really need to have that much experience to get a really good result out of it. To get started, you're really only going to need a couple things. A piece of watercolor paper, so something that's a little bit heavier, you're not going to be able to use copier paper. And you're going to need a paintbrush, doesn't really matter the size of it, and a few colors. You can decide on a palette ahead of time, but because we're painting an orange slice, most of the colors are really in pretty much the same family. So on my plate, I've got a cadmium yellow hue, I've got a deep alizarin red, I've got a violet toner, and then an ultramarine blue. So the yellow is going to be a little bit warmer. It's going to add some warmth to the colors that we use. The red is a little bit cooler and will add some of the sort of bluish tones to the orange. Uh, the, uh, the violet and the blue can help exaggerate those blue tones. My goal here is to create a few colors that we're going to be using for the light areas, the less saturated areas, and then also try to think about what the shadows are going to look like. So where do we start? The great thing about this project is it's really pretty simple. Start with drawing two circles. One is going to be a little bit smaller than the other. You don't even have to worry if they look like circles. They could be ovals, they could be circles. Oranges aren't perfectly circle in real life, so your drawing doesn't have to be either. Next, we're going to draw the fruit in the center of the orange. So. All you have to do is create some little triangle pie shapes to fill in that center circle. Then you're going to round out all the corners so there's not any sharp edges. And when you're doing this, hold your pencil really lightly and don't worry about being accurate or precise. Just let it flow. Now we're finally ready to start painting. And it's pretty easy. Just dip your brush in the water and take up some of the paint that you've mixed up. In my case, I'm choosing one of the more saturated, light orangey colors as the base coat that we're going to be putting on all of the pieces of the fruit. While you're working on this part, hold your brush really loosely and just kind of scribble. Don't worry about filling in all the gaps or the white spaces that you're leaving. Those white spaces will end up being the highlights on your painting. Uh, they'll be the part that look like uh, shining fruit juice or the reflection of light uh, on the top of the surface of the orange slice. Next you're going to paint a thin ring around the outside of the orange slice. Here I'm pretending that the light is coming from the upper right side of the screen. So I'm making it a little bit darker on the bottom left uh, and leaving it a little bit thinner on the top right. Again, you don't have to be perfect here, and adding in a little bit of variation actually makes it look a little bit more realistic. Between layers, you do need to give the paper some time to dry, otherwise the colors will start to blend together. But if you're impatient like me, you can use a little fan and sort of speed up the process. I'm going to come back in here with a second layer of paint, and this time it's going to be a little bit darker, a little bit more saturated. And I'm also going to keep adding in some variation uh, around the edge of the fruit here. I realized a couple of things at this point. One, I didn't really plan out a shadow for this piece. Uh, and two, I didn't really give any depth to the orange slice. Uh, if you were looking at it straight down, you wouldn't really see the edge of the peel. Um, but I want to give uh, a little indication of how you might actually see this if it were a three-dimensional shape and not just a 2D drawing. Keep in mind that the edge here is facing away from the light, so it's going to be a bit darker than the rest of the orange. Sometimes it can be really helpful to do a small little thumbnail sketch to get an idea of the colors you're using, the way the shadows should play, uh, what color the shadows should be, and doing a little thumbnail means you can do it quickly and you don't have to sort of commit your whole project. You can 
experiment a little bit before uh, doing something that you can't take back. Here I'm painting more of an orange wedge than a slice, but uh, the idea is the same. You're going to have the light from the top right and the shadow casting down, uh, down left. Most shadows you see actually aren't black. Uh, they're usually a little bit of a mix of different colors, a dark blue possibly. Uh, there's usually a hint of the reflection of the color of what's casting that shadow. And so for this, I'm using a little bit of purple, some red, uh, some blue, and I sort of realized in this process that I didn't have a dark enough palette to really make that shadow, so I had to add uh, a few things to my palette to help me achieve that darkness. Um, but the, the, the main thing here is you don't really want to use just straight black paint or it's going to look a little bit strange. I'm gonna keep adding some darker colors here and I'm also gonna darken up the edge of the slice a little bit. Now you do have to be really careful here because you don't want those to bleed together uh, like they kind of are right here, but um, make sure that those are dry in between so that the paints don't bleed into one another. You wanna have a clear definition uh, between the edge of the orange and the ground that it's on. As a finishing step, you can erase the leftover pencil lines that you have there, uh, brush them off, and, and then you're pretty much all set. If you found this helpful, you can like and subscribe. Uh, I'm going to be trying to do more of these in the future. Uh, if you have anything else you want me to do, let me know in the comments. Thanks.